Hey guys, this is your pharmacist Sidra and welcome to Pharmacy Tech Study Guide. In this video, I'll talk about the Poison Prevention Packaging Act, why as a pharmacy tech you need to know about this act, what drugs are exempt from this act, and much more. So stay tuned! the Poison Prevention Packaging Act, also known as PPPA, was enacted. This law requires certain legend drugs and control drugs in special packaging. Now, the legend drugs are the drugs which are approved by the US FDA to be dispensed to the public only with the authorization of a prescriber with a prescription. And the control drugs are the medications which are controlled by certain regulations because they may be abused uh, because of their addiction potential. Now that's the basic definition of it. There is a lot more that you need to know about the control drugs uh, that I'm not gonna cover in this video because I have a separate video on it. I'll put the link of that video in the i button for you. Do check that out. For now, let's move on and talk about what's special packaging. Now, special packaging is defined as a package that is designed or constructed to be significantly difficult for children under age of uh, five to open within a reasonable time and not difficult for adults to properly use. In pharmacy terminology, we call this special packaging child-proof or child resistance packaging. Now, remember, both of these terms are different. Uh, I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit. But just remember, the entirety of this PPPA Act is beyond the scope of this video. But in pharmacy practice, the expectation uh, is that all the orally administered prescription medications must be dispensed in the containers with child-resistant packaging. There are a few exemptions, uh, which are rare, but just a few in the pharmacy, which I'll mention in the end of this video. So stay with me till the end. Okay, so one key point to remember is that either the patient or the prescriber may request a standard closure container. There is no legal requirement for documentation of such requests. However, it is, I would say, in the best interest of the pharmacist to have a proof in case, you know, an issue arises in future. Because let's say if um, you get a professional liability as a result of a child ingesting medication from an easy open container, then you have an evidence that a standard closure container was requested by the patient. So just to cover yourself legally, um, it's nice and it's good to have the proof of that evidence saved within the profile of the patient. Now, it's also important to note that the patients may sign a blanket waiver requesting that all of their medications be dispensed in a non-safety container, but the prescriber does not have that ability. Prescriber can make uh, such a request only on an individual prescription, not the blanket prescriptions of the uh, patient, like not the whole profile, just an individual prescription. All right, now let's talk about the key difference between the child-proof and child-resistant containers because they're often erroneously confused. So the idea behind the child-resistant packaging is to delay a child's access to the contents of the container. Um, and these closures are child-resistant. These are not child-proof, right? because these are not intended to keep the children out of contact from the dangerous substance forever. Rather, it just like buys time to intervene before a child succeeds in opening the packaging and get into that dangerous medication, right? Now, anyone who has worked with the children knows that the time to investigate their activities is when they're super quiet and which indicates that something sketchy is actually going on that they shouldn't be doing. So basically in terms of child resistant container, you're buying that time. If a child is trying to get into the container, you can buy that time before the child is able to open that container. You can get to the child and uh, you know remove that dangerous medication from their excess. But eventually, if you give that child enough time they'll be able to open it okay so again in general the whole idea of child resistant container is to buy some time for before the child is able to get into the container in child proof container the child is not able to open the container at all 
okay? For adults, um, they are able to open it, uh, but there is a small percentage of adults who have difficulty uh, opening the container that's why we consider uh, like an easy open cap for them upon their request now there are certain drugs which are exempt from child resistant packaging in fact there are some prescription drugs that are exempt from this uh, act and uh, the most common ones would be your sublingual dosage forms of nitroglycerin as well as the chewable and sublingual forms of isosorbide dinitrate, usually in the strengths 10 milligram or less. And this is because these are life-saving medications and you know a patient may need them in case of life-threatening emergency, right? So in such a situation, patient need an unrestricted access to the medication. Now, there are a few other medications that are exempt from the Poison Prevention Packaging Act. And these medications would be your um, like powdered, unflavored aspirin, um, your pancreolipase preparations. Now, pancreolipase uh, preparations are a class of medications called enzymes. And these actually, this medication actually acts in place of the enzymes that are normally made by the pancreas in the body. So this is basically replacing that natural uh, pancreolipase enzyme in the body. Another drug which is exempt from this act is the um, effervescent aspirin, um, oral contraceptives, hormone replacement therapy, uh, also your powdered iron supplements. Um, another one would be your effervescent Tylenol or acetaminophen, also anhydrous cholestyramine in powder form. Cholestyramine is a medication this medication is used to control the high levels of cholesterol and can also be given to patients who have severe diarrhea. And the fun fact is that it's used for this condition like diarrhea because of the side effect um, of this medication as cholestyramine can cause like severe constipation. So uh, this medication is used to control diarrhea. You can also have potassium supplements, which are which come in as unit dosage package in a non-safety packaging. So in general, the purpose of this act is to reduce the risk of poisoning in children under five years of age, because we know kids of this age uh, range are curious to open and explore new things. You know, they might think of medication as a candy and they might try to get into the container and may ingest toxic amount of medication, which could be very harmful and dreadly. So these uh, container, the safety lock containers are designed in a way that they're hard for children to open, but not difficult for normal adults to open but like I mentioned earlier for adults who are not surrounded by young children or who are elderly or have any uh, you know physical limitation they can request an easy open cap this act does not apply for those adults all right so this is it for today's lecture if you have any questions write them in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next lecture good luck with your exam